Welcome everyone. Um, it is late at night in the East Coast in the United States and uh, early, very early morning in Vietnam. Um, wherever you are, thank you for joining us. I myself am honored to be hosting today's webinar um, that features Bing Chen from 500 startups and uh, six startups who are competing in this year's Viet Challenge. So um, Bing knows uh, more than a little something about startups. Um, in 2008, he co-founded Cloud, um, which was acquired six years later for around $200 million. Um, right now, he's the general partner at 500 Startups Vietnam. Um, Bing's expertise, first as a founder and then um, as an investor, has certainly given him um, a very wide scope of business, business understanding. Um, over the years, Bing has been uh, a very supportive mentor to startups at Viet Challenge. So, uh, Anh Bing, welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so, to start off, um, could you tell us a little bit about 500 Startups Vietnam and um, how, ha um, how the pandemic has affected the businesses you invested in? Sure. Um, yeah, when we started 500 Startups Vietnam in 2015, I remember there was a lot of resistance. There's a lot of people folks were asking us, why Vietnam? Uh, my, my general partner, Ed A. Tai, and I, I think for us, it was really natural. We knew that the ecosystem was still young, but we, we also knew the trajectory of where it was going, the raw ingredients that Vietnam had for a strong tech ecosystem. Um, yeah, but it was very much an uphill battle to start the fund. Uh, fast forward a few years, we, we now have 61 companies in our portfolio. Uh, we have, are the most active investor in Vietnam for the past decade. And the early indicators for the fund, you know, I'd like to go back to all those naysayers and say, I, I told you so. But now Vietnam is a very hot market. I think the, uh, I guess the government's action, decisive action around COVID has been a, a strong uh, factor in how the economy is still growing. IMF uh, predicts that Vietnam's um, economy will continue to grow at, a, uh, at around two and a half percent, where you compare it to, say, a country in Southeast Asia like Thailand, mm -hmm. which is uh, growing at a negative seven percent. So, one of the analogies I have to think about is you know after World War II, the U.S. its involvement in the war was quite minimal. It gave the U.S. a, a strong um, trajectory in, in its economy and gave it a big boost. Um, not quite in the same scale as World War, but I think Vietnam has that same advantage now. So um, uh, the crisis has been. Um, still a, a large impact in, in Vietnam because the growth here was pre, prior to COVID was clocking in around the same percent. I hear a little bit of feedback there. Um, but I think with the crisis, uh, how, how the government's reacted to it, uh, it's been minimal in terms of unemployment. Uh, there's been some stimulus that, that's helped some of the businesses here. Um, but I think from a, from a startup standpoint, yeah, you know, this is, could be the biggest crisis that most founders face in their lifetime. And, um, you know, our portfolio, a large portion of our companies did have to take some measures to ensure survival. And uh, you know, there's going to be a portion of our portfolio that, that don't survive. So I think um, there, there's been a lot of, um, I guess, reflection on your business, on business models, on spending, um, on communication. So um, I think every single company in our portfolio has been just challenged with, you know, new dynamics and uh, 
I guess the leadership there, you know, really facing challenges on how to be decisive, bold, and um, and you know, I guess thoughtful around all the decisions they're making because it's such a uh, you know I guess the next couple of years will be very decisive on whether or not they um, they continue to survive, grow, or shut shut down. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think that we all live in an, a very unusual time right now. And uh, I'm sure that all of our startups today will really benefit from your insights in order to navigate their strategies. Um, so with us today are six startups. Headkicks, um, Diamond Education, Visible, Drone Pro, Rupi Lee, and VietBrains. Um, in terms of format, each startup will have um, a maximum of 90 seconds to present their idea. And then after that, um, then you can um, ask questions and answer um, um, their queries um, or give them advice. Um, so our first team today is Petpix. Um, Michael, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Um, could you tell us about Petkicks? Okay, so Petkicks is a hardware startup. We are design and manufacturing the um, hardware for pet. Uh, can I say the screen uh, so I can talk? Yeah, sure, you can share your screen. Okay. So the rise of millennial uh, pet owner, you know, they want to uh, have pet and uh, also a convenient way to taking care of it. And I want to create an ecosystem that uh, you know, can take care of your pet, especially dog and cat. And uh, so right now we are very close to, uh, to mass production. Our first product is a bed kids camp. And uh, I can say with you uh, how it works right here. I'm messing it with my cat. So it can like turn 360 degree and then you can suit the food out for your dog or cat and then there you go. And then, um, so we launched on India Gogo earlier this year and uh, about 75 people order from us. And then we, I canceled the order and talked to all of them to um, so, and, and then let them try out the product and then uh, you know, talk to them and get their feedback and improve the product. So uh, we will launch again on uh, September on Kickstarter and then after that we move to mass production. I, I think it's 90 seconds, it's up. Yep, thank right. you. <laughs> How long have you been uh, working on this? So it took me two months to build the first prototype and then it took me another nine months to uh, to get to the mass production BCB board. So I've, I've been working on this about a year and a half. Year and a half. Um, yeah, well, we have what are, what are some of the things you've uh, struggled with? Um, so right now, uh, at first we struggled with the technical, but then we figured out how to design a BCB board, how to build a uh, live stream technology scalable. And right now we can scale live stream you know, to any amount of device. Uh, right now we are working on marketing and sale. Is, uh, our, ta our target is the USA. Um, I have 10 years experience working in USA, uh, in California too. But then I own, I, I've been a tech lead. I've never been a, like, a marketing guy. So um, I, I, you know, I, I think we need help with marketing and sale. I see. I guess I just want to focus on the team right now. So besides yourself, who's on the team and what kind of roles do they play? Okay, so starting, starting we have, uh, starting is the three of us, well, me, uh, Ving, and Beth. So three of us build the first working prototype. And then later on, the other three, like Foley and Hui and Jung, join us. So we have six people right now. Yeah. No, I really buy into 
I guess the problem here of you know being able to feed and and monitor your pets. You know, people who are pet pet lovers, they their pets are their children, and being being close to them and um, bridging that gap is very important. Um, my question is, you know, what are people doing now before your product? So before my product, they use uh, let's say an ID cam. Um, uh, the, so, so my product, we use a Sony sensor, which give a very high quality of a uh, video image. Our latency is really great too. Um, we got like 600 millisecond latency, uh, which is on pair with uh, FaceTime. Um, and then there is, of course, there is all the bad product, um, you know, like bad cam on the market, but they are, they are like a China OEM. Kind of product it's not uh, it's not high quality and then um, there haven't been any team that really you know like really want to make a great product for a owner what is your most important feature of your product um, so the most important feature of my product that no other bed cam have is 360 degree so we are currently, we are the only one that, uh, you know, have 360 degree that you can turn left and right. And so our initial prototype doesn't have 360 degree, um, but and then I launched it and then I talked to 75 buyer and then I let them use my prototype. I talked to all of them and say, hey, you know what? I want to turn left and right. I want to see my, you know, my cat and my dog. And I want to, to be able to shoot the tree uh, you know, through multiple distance, like through multiple angle. And then, uh, yeah, and then, and then I make the improvement. What do you think, why do you think there aren't any 360 degree cameras? Um, why, they, why no one ever make it yet? Is, That's is that correct. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so what I think is that um, wait, so, so first this is a niche market. It's not big. So the smarted people, they don't really, you know, put their time working on this. The smart people working for SpaceX or like bigger company. Um, so, so, so I think like lack of talent is one of, uh, you know, like one of the reasons why uh, this few haven't like picked up. Uh, also, also I think after, uh, you know, like the other company they desire, then they don't talk to customer to get feedback and really like make friends with that customer. And um, so, so, so that's what I think. But uh, what, I mean, but maybe they will make it in future, you know? Sure, sure. How hard was this product to build? You know, what kind of skill sets were required? I guess, I guess from moving from PCB to manufacturing, um, I'm trying to understand a little bit more about the barriers of entry. Okay, so, um, so, so, you know, like right now, most of, most of the stuff is about software and platform and website. And I think the hardware, uh, you know, it's not where people focusing right now, um, but I think it's gonna make a comeback. Also, I, I think Vietnam, uh, you know, will be, a, you know, it's like a, a smaller China where we can start making and design hardware. Um, so to get into this, you, you need a hardware engineer that uh, can design, uh, can do high speed design with a camera sensor. And then you have to choose the chip that is basically, um, you know, for camera. That's the hardware part. And then the software part, you have to deal with scalable live stream. Uh, live stream is not easy uh, to do, uh, especially scalable. And um, yeah, I think that's the 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 the, the true uh, barrier entry. We have yeah. Have time for one more question? Okay. No. Um. I think I'm done with my questions. Right. Should I switch you. over back to feedback now, or, or are we waiting till then? Um. So please, uh, Bing, if you have any feedback uh, for pet gigs, um. We'd hope to yeah. No, great. I mean, all, to all the teams here, I mean, you guys should really pat yourselves on the back. Um, there's instant credibility 
and just shipping a product. Um, just getting getting to work and actually building something and shipping is a huge milestone. So you should really be proud of yourselves on that. Um, to answer a little bit about the address a little bit about the hardware issue, you know, I think because China is such a strong uh, manufacturer that you know the smallest, most ingenious hardware devices once you know manufacturer it starts building that and there's demand there's just a lot of copycats and so the hardware design and manufacturing the value of it goes down to zero because you know there's so many um there's it's basically easily uh, it's easy to replicate yeah so i guess as the as a venture capitalist for us it's really um, challenging just to invest in something that's just purely hardware based um, unless it's hardware and software or there's a strong brand behind it now yeah. when i look at your business i think um well i think it's good to understand a little bit about the mechanics of venture capital you know for us when we invest in a company we're really looking for some someone to be able to win the market you know someone to to be number one and um be able to dominate in for for various reasons whether they're first or second movers or they have some kind of uh, innovative technology that's hard to replicate or some other advantage that that puts them up ahead and the reason for that is because there's there's a need for us to be able to make a return on every single one of our investments to, to for, for every single one of our investments to actually make the funds performance uh, benchmarks in terms of returns so most funds out there if you're investing a dollar they're looking to return at least three dollars back to the investor mm -hmm. and so if you're really looking at you know the kind of businesses we're investing in you know be to be able to make those those performance benchmarks we have to have companies that i think for me personally i'm looking at companies that are that's possible and it's reasonable for someone to make a hundred million dollars within five years so from idea to five years there's a chance for them to make that hundred million dollars a year and so venture is not a path for a lot of different companies there's other paths for um, in terms of capital I think for for business like yours uh, obviously um, Indiegogo friends family a lot of angel investors uh, perhaps even uh, strategic investors maybe uh, a, a company like um, uh, pet store or uh, pet smart I mean you know someone who's strategically aligned um, and obviously once you build a few units and we have actual revenue um, banks banks and and you get large enough potentially private equity but um, I think at the early onset here uh, I think the challenge for venture is being able to build it's just a strong brand such a compelling product that you are um, heads and shoulders above everyone else and there's a scale and growth to it that you're starting to demonstrate early on so hopefully that's helpful well thank you very much and uh, i thought about the hardware part too uh, we are not manufacturing we design and then we outsource the manufacturing part also um, we want to build a long-term value on our subscription with the software uh, you know like camera um, there, there is a lot of need that like barking alert, activity alert, uh, smart activity alert that we can charge uh, customer monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. um, so the long term reason is that we make money on the food subscription and the software subscription. And then we want to sell the hardware at the manufacturing cost. Yeah, definitely. I think there's um, recurring revenue and business models that you can unlock with, with that software. And um, my advice is to build a few units, get a handful of customers to truly love you, and for those customers to continue buying 
that that subscription. And we're we're not talk, we're not talking about a large number of customers, but just a very small set of customers that truly love you and believe in that brand. Uh, that's going to go a long way. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wang Bing, and thank you, Michael. Um, so um, next, let's move on to our second team today, uh, <coughs> Damon Education, Nadia Ho. Um, so let's hear more about Damon from Nadia. So hi everyone, my name is uh, Nadia Tuhung Ho and I'm very excited to be here today to introduce to you my e-learning platform, Damon Education. Um, as a globe trotter and an immigrant who has lived in diverse countries, I have experienced firsthand the challenges of learning a new language, immersing in a foreign culture, and finding a job in a new country. But in this day and age, you don't necessarily have to live and work in other countries to need foreign languages and soft skills. So a recent study from McKinsey estimates that close to half of all US jobs might be automated in the next decade, and a similar trend will be emerging worldwide, meaning that we should focus on improving the skills and abilities that will be difficult to automate, uh, which includes languages and soft skills. Um, and this is the philosophy that I have been promoting among Vietnamese people for the past five years through my global citizenship community, Ho Chiu Seng Di Quang Zui. So despite having lived abroad most of my life, I have had very rich experience collaborating with and mentoring young Vietnamese people. And I have helped many of them become polyglots, global citizens, published authors, exemplary leaders, and international scholars. Um, I have witnessed again and again that learning from high quality teachers and mentors, be it face-to-face -face or virtually, can change lives. So face-to-face uh, -face learning might be tricky for many people and especially for those who live in remote places. But even for those people who live in big cities throughout Vietnam, um, they have to choose from a limited number of teachers re uh, who reside in their locations. However, with a growing internet penetration level in Vietnam, people are realizing that they can take, uh, let's say, Czech language classes with a teacher who lives in the Czech Republic or elsewhere in Vietnam. So they don't have to rely on those teachers who live in their locations. Um, and on the other hand, there is a growing number of Vietkyo like me who offer online courses such as languages, how to get scholarships, how to recite, uh, how to recite abroad, how to um, um, succeed in their career through their own platforms. The issue that I was seeing was that there was no centralized platform that provided effective learning experience for both teachers and learners until the modification was created. So you can imagine Demonic Education as a knowledge exchange marketplace for Vietnamese people. On our platform, learners are able to choose from a wide variety of courses and instructors in different categories, um, such as languages, skills, culture, lifestyle, career, going abroad, and mentorship. And that's why we have, we have chosen the name Demon Education because Damon means multiple courses. Um, students can also choose from asynchronous and synchronous courses, depending on their preference and availability. And on the other hand, instructors can save time, money and effort while building the courses on our platform. My aspiration is to see more and more young Vietnamese people who are eloquent in foreign languages, who are not afraid to take opportunities that, are, that the globalized world offers, and who aspire to become confident, talented leaders that the modern world needs. So I hope that Demon yeah. Education will help me fulfill this ambition. Thank you. Great. Uh, tell me about the name. Um, da Damon is um, multiple courses in Vietnamese or multiple types. Uh, <laughs> I should know that. Um, so you're, you, you mentioned community. Well, tell me more about the community and the size of that community. Uh, I'm currently managing the, um, the Global Citizenship Committee um, that has um, 85,000 plus members. 
on social media. And we have also published a couple of very successful books in Vietnam um, that have become bestsellers in, uh, in the Vietnamese market. For example, Ho Chi Sang Di Quang Zoe that have been awarded one of top 20 um, best books in 2016. Great. Tell me about how the instructors and the students uh, use the product or how they um, discover it and get onto the platform? We use uh, mainly social media to promote Demon Education because we see that um, Vietnamese people are very active on Facebook and on Zalo and on other social media platforms. So we reach out to them through uh, social media and we also have a list of a huge number of uh, people who have been in touch with us through Ho Chi Sang Di Quang Te Zoe that we promote the courses to. What's your uh, most popular course? Um, it's called in Vietnamese Phát Chuyển Sự Nghiệp Thành Công Toàn Cầu, which is um, about, uh, this is my course actually, and I'm teaching people how to find um, uh, jobs abroad and how to develop their soft, uh, soft skills. Are you, do you have a business model? Uh, yes, so um, on our platform, we charge 15% uh, of uh, the commission to the, um, the instructors that um, teach on our platform. I see, so your, your take rate's 15% and the instructors keep 85%. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I guess this is a common question for most people. What have you learned so far? What are your, what are your biggest challenges? Um, we started, I, or I started this platform um, in March. So I had my first course in March of this year. And um, so it's still a new platform. So I think that the uh, challenge right now is to promote our courses to the people and to get more um, instructors and learners to know our platform and to be more involved in our platform. So besides being what you think is the first mover, um, what other innovation do you think the platform provides? Um, it is a centralized learning platform, which means that we don't, on the, on the platform, um, the teachers don't only provide um, courses um, and teaching materials, but they also create um, they, they create quizzes, exams for the students, and they assign, they, they uh, um, submit assignments for the students. So everything is uh, integrated into our platform so that, um, and, and teachers can also create uh, groups for, the for their students. So all the communication and all the teaching will be, uh, will take place on our platform. What are your most important OKRs, metrics, KPIs that tell you that this is working? Um, so within the first month, um, so, so uh, in, in the month of March, we had one ninth of students, one ninth of our students returned to take another course with us. So I think that this is um, a good start. Got it. And uh, what is there, do you track the course completion rate? Uh, it's, yeah, it, um, it's almost 100% because I believe that um, the interactive virtual classrooms are more, I think they are more user friendly for learners. And I, I personally uh, prefer them as well because we do, um, we have a lot of interaction, uh, interactions with the students. And we also, um, for example, my partner who is in, in Hanoi calls the students, uh, give feedback to them like after every, every session. So I think that learners are, um, really appreciate the, the personal touch uh, of, of our courses. And the um, um, feature of it. 
we have time for feedback. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess first off, I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of these platforms arise, right? Both, both regionally as well as in Vietnam. Uh, it's a, it's a obviously big market, huge need. People want to learn and they want to learn remotely, obviously, because of, um, COVID, this is a huge spike in demand. Actually, EdTech is, uh, probably our funds, one of our funds largest and most uh, highest performing category. And so there's, um, also, I think the population here uh, spends a huge amount of their income on education. So it's a great market to be in. I think there, uh, there are very, pretty low barriers of entry though. And I think that means you have a lot of competition. And so I think when it comes to differentiation, uh, you know, focusing on the customer and following up on a very personalized way is awesome. You know, being customer centric that way. Um, but it, it does raise up some questions about uh, scale. How are you gonna scale that up and maintain that high level of uh, customer centric focus? Um, I think a lot of platforms also uh, are challenged with you know, the instructor side. You know, how do you maintain quality and content, high quality content um, as you scale up? I mean, you, you mentioned yourself, you're, you're the instructor for your own, for your own course, you know, if that's the case, who's running the business, who's getting more instructors on. So being able to figure out uh, the scale on that is, uh, is a big challenge. Um, and I think more, you know, if you think about platforms, the, the, the way to scale is going to be through technology. So if you want to really start building something that's defensible, Focus on ways you can automate um, the ways you're you're providing value to customers, right? Without diluting that personal touch. Thank you very much for your feedback. Thank you, Eng Bing. Thank you, Nadia. So third, please welcome Visible. Saroj, it's your turn. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is Saroj uh, from Visible. Uh, Visible is a sales intelligence platform for the B2B business. So we help the uh, organization drive the predictable revenue with the data-driven decision. So uh, most of our customers are in the B2B business, meaning that they sell to the business customer as well, like factory or the business organization or the government. And uh, the main characteristic of this market is that 60% of the revenue of our customer uh, came from the repeated purchase by the existing customer. And over 80% of the revenue came through the direct sales channels. Uh, in the last 18 months, we keep, uh, we have a talk with over a thousand customers uh, in which they keep talking about the three same problems. So the first is that uh, if some of their repeated customer disappear this month, they have no idea if this will ever happen. This is like a silent killer for the business. And the second, they keep losing the new leads that coming through multiple channels like website, direct sales, email, even a social. Um, uh, say in Thailand case, we are uh, the world largest social commerce market. So even you are the B2B uh, business, some of the lead coming through this uh, channel as well, but they, uh, the, the customer keep losing uh, this, uh, the lead. And for B2B, losing a single lead might cost a million. And the last problem is the uh, inaccurate sales forecasting because the data from the upstream is dirty. So uh, it's so easy to manipulate the data um, um, uh, in Thailand case, I, I would say 95% of the organization still using Excel spreadsheet to manage the sales. I'm not sure if this is the same case in Vietnam. I would like to learn about this, about this today as well. 
So because uh, uh, this is an Excel spreadsheet, which not designed to manage the sales, so it's so easy to ma manipulate the data inside the Excel spreadsheet. Say I'm the salesperson and I don't want my boss to chase me about the deal, I can just delete the deal or edit the detail inside. And uh, there are over 600 sales CIM in the world. And many of the big brand already exist in this uh, region, I mean, Southeast Asia market for over a decade. Um, but 95% of the organization still using Excel spreadsheet. So I think this is a proof out that the Western solution doesn't fit the local need here. Um, so we still try to build a solution to solve these ma uh, three major problems for our customer. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Um, how long you've, have you been working at this? Um, one year of the development, like pre-launch. Pre and uh, after launch, we launched Q2, uh, second quarter last year. So it's about one year and a one quarter after launch. Uh, what's your um, month over month growth? Um, it depends. Um, before COVID, I would say 30%. But, That's great. Uh, yeah, when you think about like growth, um, sorry, just because I might forget it later. 30% uh, month over month growth is uh, what most uh, investors are looking for. So, And then um, tell me about your team. Uh, yes, uh, for me, I spent 20 years in the B2B sales industry. I managed over 30 million annual revenue for B2B sector for one of the largest telco in Thailand. I have few sales experience as well, running the video conference like few eight years ago, uh, long before time. And uh, our COO, um, ex-engineer working in USA for three years in the field of the ERP in data int um, integration. Uh, we worked together for seven years at the telco. So basically my team closed the deal and handed over the project to his team to do the implementation. Our CTO, um, PhD in computer engineering, he has the direct experience in machine learning and data analytics. Great. What's, what's your one sentence elevator pitch? Um, Visible is a sales intelligent platform. We help, we drive, um, we help the business drive predictable revenue with a data driven decision. Okay. And then do you have a crazy product vision? I mean, you know, where do you see it visible in five years? In fact, yeah, um, I would say a visible should be able to give the accurate recommendation of what kind of the product that, that the customer will purchase like next month. And, and the sales team should be able to work from anywhere and earn the money based on the activity that they are doing and also based on the success. Yeah. Um, right now, when, when a customer wants to buy, uh, can they get, is it, is it basically self-service or is there an implementation integration process? Uh, both um, for small SMB that do the sales service and uh, they can like go through the starting like a free trial all the way to uh, make a payment without like a single uh, touch from our team. Uh, maybe some uh, support do, uh, through the chat or phone call. But for the large enterprise, usually uh, at some point, uh, they, may, they may start with the like, free trial standard version first. But at some point, they should usually need some uh, customization in which they will need our team to do the uh, get requirement and do the proposal and do the integration, some customization. Yeah. Who's your ideal customer? Um, at the moment, we focus in uh, two industries. Uh, the first is manufacturing 
and the second is the distribution. Mostly they are selling like uh, industrial goods to the, uh, B2, the business customer. And how big are these companies? What's the ideal cus customer size? Um, their own revenue should uh, more should uh, exceed um, three million US dollar uh, per year. And uh, what's your pricing or business model? Um, our price simple, we charge 33 US dollar per user per month due annually, and we charge less for the small SMB, about three times less. I say, do, uh, do, you, do you require any type of contracts or is this month to month? Um, we build annually. So in average, we have, uh, we sign up uh, 2.4 year in average. A contact term. Great. Um, I know you've only been out for a year and a half, a little over, a little over a year, right? Um, what's, what's your churn over that period? Um, until today, we have zero churn, but we expect to have some because of the COVID um, yeah, happening in the next few months. Do you think you were you know, severely impacted, moderately, or uh, neutrally impacted by COVID, or even positively? Um, <laughs> the, situ the situation is um, go up and down, it's, it's quite, quite rapidly. So in March, we, we, we have the big impact. Uh, many, of many of our major customers hold the contract. We ask the landlord to stop paying rent. We lose a few employees. But after three weeks, the situation coming back is quite fast. The, our customer and the market, they adapt quite uh, quickly. Uh, and they start like a, un, um, to sign the contracts. That's, that's why we, I think overall until today, as of today, I would say it's a little bit positive impact for us because the it seems like the uh, the customer they are forced to go online, and we are we are one of the um, product that can help them doing that. Great. So um, COVID didn't kill you, but what do you think can kill you? <laughs> Many things. <laughs> um, um, in the long run, I would say if the if the a big player from the from the west, if they figure out how to do the localization, because they are so big, they are our size cannot compare with them. They are a, a lot bigger than us. So if they during this like I would say like three years or five year window, if they figure out how to localize the product understand the Asian market, they might hear us. Great. We have one minute left for feedback. Okay. Um, no, I love, I love this category. I mean, and the general thesis, you know, I think a lot of international Western companies are ignoring Southeast Asia. Um, they're not, they're, they're priced out of range of the customers here and they're not prioritized as well as they don't provide the support. And so that gives a lot of opportunity for really um, fundamental technologies and, and solutions to be built and, and deployed here. So um, yeah, this is, this is a great category. Now, I, I, I didn't ask the question, but what's your uh, customer acquisition costs? Um, in average of uh, 400 US dollar. And uh, uh, contract value? Contract value is like maybe 10 times comparing to the CAC. Great, that's healthy. Siroj, I don't know if you remember me, we, we, we chatted, uh, I believe it was last year in Bangkok. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, with, yeah, Kasper. Um, yeah so, I, you know, uh, enterprise SaaS. This is a. I actually had angel and invest in, in a company um, in this category. You may have heard of it. Outreach as a second check into it. So the growth can be spectacular. You're hitting 
you know, uh, squarely in in the area of revenue, where there's there's many businesses that are willing to pay. Um, I think some of the challenges are going to be around, you know, like what we mentioned, right, competition. And so, you know, one of the things to focus there on is, is you know, how deeply integrated you can be and how to create network effects so that the more <laughs> customers come on or the more data they have with you, there's more value to be unlocked. Um, but yeah, congrats so far on, on the progress and, and uh, the traction thus far. Um, uh, we'd love to help you if you're looking to fundraise and uh, if it's not me, connect you with the right uh, investors. Yes, uh, may I ask about the, um, some um, context about the uh, Vietnam market size and competition. We'd like to learn from, from you and from the uh, friend here as well that the, um, what's it look like uh, in, in, in Vietnam? What is the solu solution that the, the organization using to manage the sales team today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Vietnam has gone through a rapid change. A few years ago, um, I was looking to invest in a company that was doing enterprise SaaS uh, sales. And, you know, there, there was some reluctance there uh, because a lot of the companies here, well, first of all, the economy is driven by large SME. Right, so they have some large players, but the most majority of the markets is small business. And so, if you think about their journey um, on the internet, you know, many of them are just just getting on the internet. So, there's some reluctance from my part to think, okay, are these customers ready for kind of SaaS products, you know, digitally native cloud products, and and and, and that type of spending? Are they going to be you know, sophisticated enough, or how much? effort is going to be to educate your customer. Um, we invested thinking that, okay, well, the businesses will learn and they're going to learn quickly. And this is a market we want to be in. And it's been one of the, uh, a, a great story. You know, the, there's a company here in Hanoi called Base, uh, based at VN that provides enterprise SaaS products. And they've been growing at a very uh, r rapid pace. So um, exceeding uh, my expectations. All right. So yes, please please come and sell your products here. Okay, I will. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Bing. Thank you, Saroj. So next in line, we have Drone Pro. Chung, your 90 seconds start now. Uh, my name is Chung. I'm from uh, Drone Pro Vietnam. Uh, I already uh, uh, shared about uh, our uh, business models. Uh, in the last uh, meeting, uh, right now uh, we we answer three questions from from uh, big challenge. First is uh, the impact uh, of uh, COVID nineteen on our revenue operation and business strategy. Uh, second is a short term and long term uh, response to the change, and the third uh, is the capital rising under the new normal. So in brief uh, summary, uh, Drumbro Vietnam is a, a company that's uh, focused to develop the a uh, smart drone uh, system uh, to serve the high-rise building. So our service including uh, delivery to the balcony of the apartment, uh, painting and cleaning the glass outside of the building, and uh, firefighting for the high-rise building. So uh, due to the COVID-19, uh, uh, this is very good opportunity for us because it's increased the demand and the using from the customer for the non-human touch solution, uh, including the robotic in uh, logistic delivery uh, and uh, the drone too. And uh, second, uh, the impact is um, we change we change our uh, business strategy uh, from uh, focus on the sales to the public uh, for scale up state to the service uh, for the short term inflow. Uh, and then reduce the risk uh, for the on the uh, period and next period will be sales to the public. And uh, the last one, we increase the uh, multi-function uh, smart commercial platform uh, for the drone. So therefore we can add uh, more function uh, to our drone platform and increase the type of revenue for, for our company. Uh, and, and the next uh, change uh, in, in the business environment is that uh, the government and the people around the world understand more 
uh, the value of the autonomous logistic and service solution. So they have the demand for management tool of the urban air mobility system and uh, the required for safety standard. And two of these requirements, uh, Don Pro Vietnam already uh, satisfied in our design of the product and solution. Uh, and the last one, uh, capitalizing under the new normal, uh, we uh, look at to the, the report uh, in the recent uh, days about our uh, commercial drone uh, market. We see the increase in investment uh, to the new deep tech and autonomous uh, solution. Yes, so all of this, uh, the impact from the COVID-19 to our business strategy. Thank you. Um, can you tell me more about the product? It's a current stage, what it looks like and how it works. Okay, uh, so right now, yeah. Right now, our product is uh, the solution for high-rise building. So it will include it will include the delivery service to uh, the apartment directly to the apartment, uh, painting and cleaning the uh, the classes outside of the, the building and uh, fire fighting for the high-rise building. Uh, for example, if you um, order something online, for example, you order the visa our smart delivery drone will uh, pick up your visa at the sellers and go through the virtual infrastructure to go to your apartment building and uh, ship it directly to your apartment. Uh, the best case is uh, to your balcony. You can receive it in other states like uh, your floor or your windows or uh, any other uh, place you can choose, but the best case is your balcony. Uh, second service is uh, cleaning the classes of the high-rise building. Uh, you, you can make that uh, right now in Vietnam and other uh, uh, city in the world. We have uh, many uh, sky cover building, but uh, to cleaning the class outside of that building, uh, right now we still use worker. Yes, it's very dangerous worker and dangerous for the people around the building. Uh, and we uh, developed a drone that can uh, clean uh, the classes outside of the high-rise building and it's reduce the cost for operator, reduce the risk for the worker. And the last one is uh, fighting for, for the high-rise building. Yes, that is a free uh, primary uh, solution and service uh, right now we develop. Uh, right now it's in uh, design phase. Is it been built? Uh, is it actually in use in pilots? Uh, right now, we uh, already uh, designed and produced uh, three, three types of prototype for many types of pilot of the drone. We already received the patent from uh, USBTO, from uh, um, uh, the, the, the uh, APRO, for APRO 2020, yes. And uh, we already have uh, some uh, customers that ready to use the, the solution, but we need uh, more time and investment to improve our uh, prototype to co uh, commercial uh, product. So what's keeping it from being ready now? What does it fail to do? Um, in fact, uh, we need to, you know, um, the, the lobby for the regulation because uh, each of the country have different uh, regulations. <clears throat> so uh, our design, and our system right now can adapt with the change of that uh, regulation, but it still need more time uh, for us to test to you know to prove that uh, everything is safety is okay to use in the urban area uh, can be manageable by uh, you know the, the the market manager. So uh, at that time we can you know apply this to the real market. What is the what are the challenges with the regulations? I mean, how far are you from you know, getting support on this, and when do you predict this to be legal? Uh, because uh, I think uh, most of the regulation right now in the world, not not, not only in Vietnam, in the world, is a uh, based on the, the the design of the flight cam. You know, it's free fly with camera, no uh, leave, uh, no safety standard cannot manage, but our system different from all of that uh, design. 
in fact, uh, our system do not free fly. It's fly through the infrastructure for fly object in the, the city. And we develop that uh, uh, infrastructure for the flying object uh, with, with the restrict area, with the you know, limit of the altitude, for example. So uh, it, it, it really a different system compared to the, the, the current uh, solution. So you, you can see right here our product feature and competitive advantages. You can see that uh, our tone is very small. <coughs> size is compact as the delivery case compared to other design. You can see the Uber it right here, the drone of a Uber right here is very big compared to the delivery case it can carry, for example. Uh, next, we have the very good uh, balance system uh, for the good service inside the delivery case. So uh, it's uh, keep the, the, the product more stable through the, 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 the flight route. Uh, we have a safety standard for, for our drone system, like airbag system, a parachute system. Um, we do not create any uh, security issues. We don't have uh, the camera. We avoid the collision by the light, LiDAR system, not, not, not use camera. And we focus on the unit market, it's a high rise building only. And uh, that service, our competitor cannot compete because they have the traditional design. We design with different uh, form. So all, all of this, we believe that we can, you know, uh, adapt with the change in regulation for flight object in the city with commercial application. Can you describe the spans? Describe, describe what? Yeah. The, the patents, just a, a quick overview of the patents. Okay, uh, <coughs> our patent our patent is uh, the, 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 the design uh, and the function for all of the system is include, is include uh, the design for the special drone, it's a new platform drone uh, with, you know, uh, the different size and uh, different uh, design for the, the, the thrust engines. Um, and uh, with the uh, safety standard uh, for the flying uh, drone in, in, in the city, in the urban area, like uh, back, parachute, uh, automatic avoid the potential collision. Uh, it can predict the risk to activate the cell function, for example. And the patent is for the virtual infrastructure that we develop for the drone in the urban area. That means uh, the drone do not uh, fly free fly from uh, the seller to the buyer or from point A to point B. No, it's not free fly. It flies through the real street where the car and the bike use, but in another altitude. So therefore we can manage this, the manage the whole system very easy. We can add information like weather, uh, like traffic jam, like all the information, restrict area from the airport, for example, you can add it to the virtual infrastructure. Yeah. Understood. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, one of the things that um, yeah, it's, uh, it's great that you're really diving deep into something that's so technical and um, you know, something that is still unproven in terms of use case and you're exploring those things. That's what you know, venture capitalists like to see, things that are just not, um, you know, obviously uh, things that may, may uh, a market that may be built in the future. Um, uh, the market is really big right now. You can see the report from uh, uh, Drone Industry Insights. Right now, the market uh, for commercial drone is about 43 billion US dollars with 20% 20 20 in growth per year. Very big market. And the investment yep. accumulate, uh, up to now is about 4 billion only. So you see, 4 billion in investment create 40 billion US dollars market size very high profitable market. That's why right now the, the increase for, for this solution is increased. The, the investment for this solution is increased in the world, yeah. Yeah, I guess my, my feedback here is, you know, I think a lot of startups, they don't have a lot of resources and they don't have a lot of time. And so, yeah, and there's a lot of unknowns. And so what you've done is tried to create a platform and that has a lot of different uses. And it's perhaps what you want to do is choose one that you think is going to be the most effective use of this product, one that's going to have the biggest uh, impact 
the, the lowest um, amount of effort on your part to unlock the most value and um, go with that, you know, because otherwise you're, you're building for so many different types of customers and so many different types of um, use cases that I think it's, it's challenging from an investor standpoint to, to think, okay, well, there's, there's uh, in, just... in fact, it is uh, the strategy. Uh, we have uh, no. two years no. of on the period. Put tab so, already up. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> we can right. uh, we can have some Q and A at the end of uh, the panel. Um, so um, let's move next um, to a group if, group Billy solo. Could you tell us more about your business? Yes. Uh, I'm really honored to be here today. Um, I am actually, our startup actually very new and we are very young. I'm a computer science uh, student who really passionate about AI. So when I come to the US for studying, I realized the problem that many college students have um, that setting their schedule, their communication style, uh, their priority before doing any group project, that's very time consuming. So I was inspired by that to use AI to create a mobile solution that can make our college student group project more productive and less stressful. Uh, how is that? Besides, uh, we believe that our products is different from other communication uh, channel or uh, app like Slack uh, or Messenger because it's, it's either uh, more productive but less complicated than any of them. And, and we, beside the basic function like dashboard, calendar to track deadline or chat function, all those basic function, we have a virtual assistant called AP. So what AP can do is to, uh, for example, to, to, to help you answer the question based on the chat database when you, the managers, the leaders, or the, the, the people who know the answer for your team member are not available. So this AI will know the answer from your chat message. And if, if it does not know, it will deliver the message, the question to your leader, to the leader or to you. Um, also, we want to make this uh, uh, virtual assistant more personal, more narrative with sentiment analysis and, or, and uh, our special feature called attentiveness tracking. And it can track if you are attentive in the group uh, project or not. And if you are not, it will uh, notify you or it will help you to answer question when the leader is not available. Uh, our target is uh, for college students from 19 to uh, uh, 25 years old. We also hope to make it more to professional from 25 to 35 years old. Uh, who in a small team, corporation. And uh, we, we also, uh, our business model is uh, from uh, advertisement, banner advertisement, uh, subscription, monthly subscription for $5 a month for special feature uh, with AI. We also have um, uh, commission from uh, when, when we create event, where we, we will also suggest a nearby location like coffee shop, um, uh, or, or library and those, those locations will pay a commission. And also, um, uh, because we are, our staff is still very young, so we come here not for uh, some financial, uh, big financial support, but we, we really need your feedback in inside from professional like you so that we can grow our stuff uh, in the next like, uh, in the next six months, first in the US and then in Vietnam. Um, uh, and uh, right now, uh, uh, specifically right now, we are in the process of uh, product development. We have like do the market research for two months and now we are building the, uh, uh, hopefully we will release the app at the end of 2020. Thank you. Oh, I think Bing, you are on mute. Oh, done that twice. Um, Thank you for that. So during your market research, what did you discover that was surprising? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? 
Yes, uh, during your market research, what did, did you discover anything that was surprising to you? Um, sorry, can I jump up and answer it? Because see, you know, I'm also a member of group meeting. So I actually doing the market research and we support because it like in the region current marketing right now, there's not a lot of app for college students that like symbol and focus in the core value enough. For example, Slide is more for like professional higher working environment. And since I study in the US, I've seen a lot of students you group me, but I think group me is too simple and it's just like a different version of Messenger. So we want to have something that like simple enough, but also have a good function and resource for college students to use. Yeah, just just a bonus one. Uh, our vision is like to make this our uh, group project uh, app is virtual assistant to use. So it will do all the like uh, uh, set up meeting for you, like a similar document for you. Like you just have to do your job. I see. And I guess is that the differentiator between enterprise or college students is the uh, focus around curriculum and your your school schedule. Right. Yes. Okay. And I'm trying to understand a little bit more that problem deeply. So I guess you know if if I if I have some kind of um, event school event, how is that different from a business meeting? Or what okay, is specific so to I to students? So like if you have a school event, our app will have like a daily calendar and a weekly calendar. So your event will eventually appear on this calendar and we have an IA assistant and it will remind you um, when the days come closer and what is the purpose and where to meet and what time to meet. And we see that different because um, with the business meeting event, it's more like, you know, a deal with someone and like the co with college student, we want something to like friendly and close and make the student feel like, oh, it's actually like my soulmate, like someone who stand with me and who reminds me every day. And um, I guess where are you, how are you training this AI assistant? Um, so oh. this AI Okay, uh, so uh, in our AIs, uh, we, 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 we use uh, technologies called natural language processing. We, we train our model on Google Collab and our, uh, we are running our uh, back end with Google Cloud to process all and the chat box and uh, with a sentiment analysis. But where where is that um, data coming from to, to initially train and label? So so initially yeah. for the prototype, we are using uh, the uh, very popular data sets called Twitter analysis, uh, sentiment analysis, and also the chat conversation from Kaggle. Um, um, Kaggle. We, we are testing the model. We also are testing the model on uh, Vietnamese language with the Flutterbird from BNAI. Got it. So you're gonna you're gonna focus on uh, the Vietnamese student population first. Uh, actually, we we are focusing on U.S. first because we do we have done the, the research, uh, this research for like um, two months already. So we would like to do it uh, in the U.S. first, and then next um, in 2021. And um, how are you how are you going about doing your product development? And can you repeat that? Sorry, can yeah. How are you? How are you building this product? Is it you know? Are you uh, releasing and learning, or are you? Do you have a uh, product roadmap, set of features you're trying to achieve for releasing? Yes. Uh, so from um, now to uh, February uh, 2021, we hope to publish the first app with uh, first. The, the, uh, the AI features with the Q&A chat bar will answer all the questions from the, the chat database. But also we have the basic function of a, of a communication app like a chat 
and a, a calendar and a dashboard so that you it can you can see see your progress at this moment. Uh, maybe talk to you a little bit about your team. Yes, well, so we have learning analysis from NYU uh, and UT Dallas. We have engineer from Apple, uh, 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 Citadel, uh, and uh, uh, I myself also have experience in AI, uh, but we are still very young. That's why we come here to ask for your feedback, your insight from professional. Sure, what are you struggling with? Feedback. Sure. Uh, I, I guess I'm happy to answer questions you might have. So, what do you? Uh, what's the biggest unknown you have? What kind of? What kind of help do you need? Um, so the thing is, when we launch our app, we uh, firstly uh, not only the feedback, but also we need a financial support of uh, five thousand dollars to to maintain the cost of like running Google Cloud for like uh, 1,000 active user uh, to, to run our apps. Uh, but also um, uh, we, we, we need your financial uh, like feedback inside so that we can run our businesses without making, um, you know, time consuming mistake. Got it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're building a consumer app, so I think the best way to learn is just to release whatever you have. Uh, I think um, waiting until February 2021 to have an app with AI and Q&A, perhaps you want to break that up into smaller chunks and release the most important features needed um, as soon as possible. Uh, the good thing is that I think Platforms like Google Cloud, BizSpark, uh, Microsoft, I mean, Amazon, they have startup programs where, you know, they will give you credits um, and you don't have to pay anything. You just have to apply. And if you have trouble with that, I can help you with that. But, you know, I think building a, uh, a very focused product, um, I love that. You know, I, th I think it's good to really have focus early on. But it's also good to... Uh, not depend solely on tech, but try to be creative and, and learn without having to, re to, to build, uh, build products and release it in, in, a, in big chunks, like what you're trying to do now. Thank you. So, um, yeah, smaller, smaller iterative releases if you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Group Billy. Thank you, Bing. So last but not least, we have uh, another uh, edu uh, another education startup. So let us welcome Viet Brains, uh, Henry. It's your All turn. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank uh, Viet Challenge for uh, organizing this event and uh, being for taking your time. Uh, um, so uh, about Viet Brains, I think uh, let's start with the uh, problem. So every year, 95% of Vietnamese students couldn't find a job. That would sponsor them to stay in the US after their graduation, 95%. This due to the gap between university and industry. Vietbrain's mission is to fill in this gap and increase the success probability of Vietnamese students and job seeker. Job seeker. We are in the beta uh, stage where we are testing out uh, with uh, teaching SQL, statistic, marketing, and uh, programming. Um, we offer affordable and um, uh, online classes taught by enthusiastic and knowledgeable Vietnamese professionals from the industry. And we focus on practical and modern teaching material. So with only $50 to $100 a class, the students not only learn from the best, but they also have the chance to network with other students, the teachers and the TAs from the class. So the, the important thing of their brains is the teachers are professional, so they know what knowledge is important to learn, like what is going to be asked during the interview and how to answer it correctly. 
So we are in the very early stage of, uh, of our company and uh, we just started out with our first public class, which is the introduction to SQL that I'm teaching right now. And I charge a uh, $50 and I have two class running with a uh, 20 student for each class. And in uh, one week, uh, our entire like open spot has been filled. So I'm, I'm very um, like um, happy about the result. And I think that when we add more like advanced uh, SQL, uh, data warehouse, data engineer and programming uh, data structure algorithm and marketing and a bunch more class and we bring in more and more like professional, Vietnamese professional. I think we're gonna be uh, uh, doing uh, very well. And our only success metric that we have for the um, um, Viet brands is how many students, how many job seekers that we are, uh, that, that we could help them and make them uh, get a job at their dream company, like Google, Amazon. I am a, um, a student, I came to the, uh, I was a student, <laughs> I came to the US like 10 years ago. I've been through the entire process of uh, applying for a job, changing my resume, informational interview, on-site interview. So I know very well how it felt to go through this process. And I really want to make this entire journey for like first time student easy. And that's why I created Get Brands. And uh, I would love to hear um, some feedback and question from you. I think my headset's uh, dying, so I'll take this off. Um, so you're teaching uh, these courses. How many teachers do you have on the platform? So right, so um, right now we have about um, so me. I'm teaching. Uh, uh, so right now, like officially, there's only me teaching right now. But we are testing out with uh, three more uh, teacher. Um, one from Amazon, one from Code.org, and one from Microsoft. And so uh, we are running this guy through like the the, uh, the beta right now. Test. We are uh, we are letting them teaching for free to the potential student to see if the material is good and the student are happy about it. So yeah, to answer the question, uh, one uh, right now and three in the pipeline. And you're delivering these classes virtually or in person? Yeah, virtually. Okay. Through Zoom, and we uh, meet over uh, um, we met over the the, the, the weekend and uh, for like one hour, thirty minute or two hour, and then we have homework for them to do through the week, and we, we communicate uh, through Slack. So and, the uh, process is very low. And uh, are you? Are you working with a learning management system, an LMS, or anything like that? Uh, not yet, but uh, that is our next phase. Probably next year, when we have a good portfolio of classes, we would love to uh, partner with uh, Amazon and all the big tech company to see if we can make one journey from studying in our class all the way to interview at the big tech company. So I guess, um... You know, you're really early in your journey. What do you What are you struggling with now? Um, I guess uh, mostly like operational work. Like, uh, oh, I think I have a question. So, uh, first of all, I'm very passionate about building uh, and um, making the Vietnamese community bigger and better, but. The problem is that's only about, um, the numbers show that we only have like 25,000 um, uh, like, uh, Vietnamese students uh, in the US uh, every year. Um, so I guess the market is not that big in, in comparing to other like startup that you uh, saw and listened to today. 
So I guess the question is, we are very passionate about this market, but will we have the problem of like outgrowing this market in probably two or three years time? And if that happened, like, um, like do you have any advice for us? Yeah, there's a hundred million people here. I think you should be targeting here. Um, sure. Um, I guess that could uh, we we could do that too. Um, like our, our mission statement is to uh, focusing on the Vietnamese student overseas. But I guess um, if we uh, outgrow that market, we definitely can bring all this material, all these professional teachers, and then. Uh, go to vietnam i guess yeah. there's a there's a lot of competition right now i i've been uh, watching all this school like uh my ex uh data analysis school so there's, there's a lot of like school in vietnam popping up right now to um to do the same thing so the, the the competition in the us is not big but the competition in the um in vietnam is um is growing i can see that yeah, the competition is fierce because I think there's, it's hard to differentiate. Right. You know, you know, does this platform have the best teachers or the best curriculum? And so how are you making sure you have the best content or that, you know, this content is going to be the most effective? Because at the end of the day, they're, they're looking to get hired, right? Exactly. So I guess um, um, what differentiate us from the rest i think our passion um uh, i am very passionate about uh, the students and myself i have five years of experience working as a business intelligence engineer at amazon i spent thousands of hours with sql so i know for, for a fact that and i've done like more than like 50 interviews at amazon so i i know for sure that like when it comes to SQL, like what do you need to study and what do you need to learn? Now, I'm going to look for the same exact person from Amazon that is a software engineer and from Google and from Facebook. And I'm going to try to bring this guy have, that has the same passion, has the same point of view, that they also love to build a Vietnamese community. And if I can increase this circle of life, passionate Vietnamese professional, I think that's going to be our biggest asset and we can compete with anyone. And how do you reach these students? Uh, just through Facebook and uh, through Vid Challenge. So I have a database of over 300 uh, um, Facebook group, uh, like the uh, Hội Thanh Niên Sinh Viên Việt Nam tại Seattle. So, uh, Vietnamese student in Seattle, Vietnamese student in San Fran, New York, in Chicago, in Boston, and me and a lot of other of my friends uh, in, in, in my team, we are like, uh, we interact with these student a lot and then we know like, like what do they want. So it is uh, very uh, easy for us to, uh, to to get in touch with our customer, mostly like zero dollar spend on marketing. So we have time. Okay. We have time for um, your feedback for Henry and then um, the general feedback for six startups we have here today. Great. Yeah, I think, you know, passion is a qualitative factor that, you know, I take a look at for sure, but you want to come up with some quantitative um, metrics. For example, you know, for the folks who do take a course, are they mm -hmm. able to get into Facebook and Google right. and Amazon? So tracking that to validate or to uh, prove the effectiveness is uh, is going to be needed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if that's your core mission, then most likely you're going to have to stay in the U.S. and maybe go beyond just that Vietnamese community. I do think you know, that is proprietary information, right? Being able to understand that technical interview process that happens at Amazon and Facebook and Google exactly. that you can really bring, uh, bring to bear into the curriculum and then provide in terms of practical knowledge to increase 
the chances that they'd be hired. So, you know, really laser focused. Now, hey, I'm not helping you with SQL. I'm helping you. Hey, you're going to get a job as a, a data engineer mm-hmm. at Amazon. We're going to we're going to make you uh, pass that technical portion of the interview. Exactly. Yeah. So the retention rate, like, as a student coming back to the platform, the completion rate, as a student finishing the class, and then right. do they get a job? Uh, that is absolutely like the most important success metric that uh, I am looking for. I'm tracking. Yep. yep. And I, I know, and that's a lot of value. Obviously, getting a job is huge, right? Um, I'd like to see you know, the business evolved into something that's not just, you know, that one transaction and the Mm. value goes away. You know, how do you keep this person as a customer over time Mm. and what kind of other products and, and, and revenue, uh, sorry, what are the products and value you can provide? I see. Good feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bing, do you have any big advice for all our startups today? No, I'm, I'm a, I applaud all of you for, for really um, continuing to build, especially during this crisis. You know, it's, it's a lot worse in the U.S. than it is out here. Um, I feel that, you know, a lot of the times, times like this, downturns creates more opportunities. And... You know, entrepreneurs often, uh, a lot of them are, you know, folks have been laid off, right? And they're thinking about that one project that they had. And and if you're laid off and you need to put, you, you can't get, get can't get work, you know, you better bet you're working on that project. So um, I, I think it's a, a great time to, to, to build something to, to think about you know, all those ideas you've had and, and start executing on them. From a capital perspective, you know, we've had a record number of funds and a record volume of capital raised over the last few years. And um, investors are investing. Uh, there's, a, there's a report a couple of days ago from Fenwick. Uh, people were expecting valuations to drop and the pace of investing to drop, but um, the data is showing that's not. And people are investing over Zoom and they're um, increasing in valuation. So really surprising data means that, you know, for folks working on new ideas, um, there's capital for you. Uh, if you got the right you know, idea and, and, and product and team, um, I think uh, you know there's there's some hesitation on some uh, investors because we've been incredibly busy over the last four four months just dealing with our investors and you know we have 61 companies that we're we're helping um, but through all this we are looking to continue investing and you know what I always look for what I'm I'm trying to build here is um, institutional capital for. Vietnamese founders anywhere in the world. We what we are one of the, I think the only institution that focuses on uh, Vietnamese entrepreneurs. So uh, continue, uh, please continue your work. I'm looking forward to seeing your success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Thank you, our six teams. Um, and I guess that brings our webinar to its conclusion. Thank you everyone who joined um, who joined us today for staying up late or getting up early. I trust that um, Bing's insights along with the stories from our founders um, have proven very in- inspirational and educational. So happy Father's Day um, and to all of our friends, your challenge friends around the world. Enjoy the weekend. Um, I really look forward to seeing you in our future events.